Hi everyone and welcome back. We have previously seen how to produce electric circuits to fill one yellow belt with assembling machines of type 1. Today we will see how to produce a single red belt of electronic circuits, which can transport 30 items per second with assembling machines of type 2. We will also see the difference between the two designs as it will affect the number of machines required. We will go with a slightly different design from the previous time where we will remove the belts for the copper wires. It will reduce the number of inserters we need and simplify the design. We now have three assembling machines producing copper wires for two assembling machines producing electronic circuits. To calculate the throughput, we need to divide the crafting speed of the assembling machine by the electronic circuit crafting time. The first one is 0.75 and the second one is 0.5 which gives us a throughput of 1.5. It means it produces half an item more per second compared to an assembling machine of type 1. We then need 20 assembling machines producing electronic circuits to fill a single red belt. To get to that number, we simply need to divide the expected production, 30 items per second, by the production rate of each assembling machine, which is 1.5. To be able to maintain a consistent throughput, we also need to ensure that there is enough of the required resources. To produce an electronic circuit, we need one iron plate and three copper wires. And to produce three copper wires, we need 1.5 copper plates. It means we will need a total of 45 copper wires and 30 iron plates per second. The amount of required resources and the consumption rate of the assembling machines for the respective resources also affects how many belts will be required for the input resources. The assembling machine's production rate is 1.5, which means it will consume 1.5 iron plates per second and 4.5 copper wires per second, or 2.25 copper plates per second. A red belt can carry at most 30 items per second, which means that if we divide 30 by 2.25, we can fit at most 13 assembling machines that produce electronic circuits to consume all the copper plates from a single belt. If we were to have belts for copper wires, we could not have more than 6 assembling machines per copper wire belt. Ideally, we would have a single belt for the iron plates, but it would require a different design. To move items between belts and assembling machines, we need inserters. The choice of inserters depends on multiple factors, including how many items can be carried at the same time. We will consider they can carry one item at a time. The yellow inserter will only be used to carry the electronic circuits because they are too limited to carry the amount of items required for the other resources. Therefore, we need fast inserters for iron plates and copper plates. Long-handed inserters will also be used for the electronic circuits because it needs to be moved further away. Let's now see how much power this setup consumes. There are two devices that consume power, the assembling machines and the inserters. The assembling machines consume 155 kilowatt each. We need 20 of them for the electronic circuits and 30 for the copper wires. It gives us a consumption of 3100 kilowatt and 4650 kilowatt. If we sum up the two consumptions, it is a total of 7750 kilowatt. On the inserter side, different inserters have different power consumption. For the electronic circuits, there are two fast inserters that consume 59.3 kW each, one long-handed inserter which consumes 21.4 kW, and one normal inserter which consumes 15.1 kW. There are 40 fast inserters, 20 yellow inserters, and 20 long-handed inserters for the electronic circuits assembling machines. That consumes 3102 kW. There are also 30 fast inserters for the copper wires assembling machines, which adds up to 1,779 kilowatt. In total, the inserters consume 4,881 kilowatt. Combined with the assembling machines, it is 12,631 kilowatt. Assembling machines also produce pollution. It's fairly easy to calculate the pollution's production. We simply need to take the pollution that each assembling machine produces and multiply it by the amount of machines. In this case, we have 50 machines that produce 3 pollution, so the total pollution produced is 150. We now need to see how to produce copper plates. We need 45 copper plates produced every second because we need 1.5 belts of 30 items to produce 90 copper wires every second. Each electric furnace produces 0.625 copper plates per second, so to reach our target we will need 72 electric furnaces. We can fit up to 48 electric furnaces per belt 
given that one machine produces 0.625 items per second and a bell can carry 30 items per second. It means we need at least two belts for the copper ore and the copper plate. Those electric furnaces consume power as well. They consume 186 kilowatt each for a total of 13,392 kilowatt. Regarding the inserters, there are two yellow inserters per electric furnace and they each consume 15.1 kilowatt. So if we multiply that number by the number of furnaces, 72 and the amount of inserter per furnace, 2, it gives us a total power consumption of 2174.4 kilowatt for the inserters. When we add the power consumption of the furnaces and the inserters, we get a total of 15566.4 kilowatt. And the pollution for the copper plate will be 72 per minute given each machine produces one pollution. For the copper ore production, we need 90 electric drills to meet the electronic circuits production's demands. That requires two baths to carry that amount of resources, and it consumes 8,100 kilowatt given each drill consumes 90 kilowatt. Each drill also produces 10 pollution per minute for a total of 900 pollution per minute. Let's now look at the iron plate. We need 30 iron plates produced every second because we need one belt of 30 items to produce 30 electric circuits every second. Each electric furnace produces 0.625 iron plates per second, so to reach our target we will need 48 electric furnaces. We can fit up to 40 electric furnaces per belt given that one machine produces 0.625 items per second and the belt can carry 30 items per second. We could have fitted all the iron plates produced on a single belt. Those 48 furnaces consume 186 kilowatt each, which gives us a total of 8,928 kilowatt. Air inserters are used to move the resources in and out of the furnaces, and each furnace needs two of them to operate. The power consumption for one inserter is 15.1 kilowatt. The 96 inserters consume 1,439.6 kilowatt. When we add the power consumption of the furnaces and the inserters, we get a total of 10,377.6 kilowatt. The pollution for the iron plate production will be 48 per minute, given each machine produces one pollution. For the iron ore production, it is very similar to the copper ore production. Each drill consumes 90 kilowatt and produces 10 pollution per minute. To meet the demand, 60 mining drills are required, therefore, the power consumption is 5,400 kilowatt and the pollution is 600. Let's now have a quick look at the power consumption and the pollution produced compared to the ones to produce one yellow belt of electronic circuits. They both have almost doubled with a pollution of 1,770 and a power consumption of 52,075 kilowatt, which is the equivalent of 868 solar panels, 58 steam engines or 9 steam turbines. 